understanding of the intellectual history of the discipline in its you know, whatever, global and local uh, yeah. global and local uh, manifestations. Yes. Because then it, there's purpose to this job. Exactly. I think history is a problem. It's, it's, it's yeah. better than history. Yeah. Because it, mm. history is as I guess, it's only one. Right. Yeah. History is uh, yeah. Is it also helpful to, in addition to what we're doing, to be able to say why it's important and how yeah. we would do it? So that how, yes. The why, because we said so, this is the authority of the state. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it saves a lot of words. But how? I mean, I think parallel and divergent was an attempt to get at methodology. Yeah, but still, uh, you're right. This is an institution, and I, we, we have to obey it, and we have to follow. But it would be interesting to have some sense of why studying intellectual history is important for architects. Uh, so I'm not an historian, I teach studio, and I am just reading this short paragraph, I would like to understand why this is important. Why, I don't know, studying the past provides me, provides my students with a collection of solutions, of problems in different time periods and in, with different technology, with different that will open their mind, something like that. So why we cannot put some language that show how this is uh, very relevant to, because I think the, it's not only the, the global or the Western canon that are under attack, the whole history is under attack. I mean, right. this is shrinking, the feeling positions, everything. All we are doing is, is not consider relevant anymore. So I think uh, uh, even a line mm -hmm. in a, such an important uh, uh, document would illuminate others in the faculty to the importance. So why, why is it important? You tell us. <laughs> well, that's an important point because I went down to B1, which is redesign. Mm -hmm. Redesign colon to prepare for a comprehensive program for an architectural project. So it's telling uh, you what yes. design is. And this is not explaining why. why. So this is not this, yeah, good point. And I think that the missing document uh, says it very well. Uh, it's part of, well, the mission of, we, we drafted that text uh, as part of the mission statement of GAHTC. Then we said, wait, this isn't a mission statement. This is a replacement for the uh, accreditation criteria. And so then we moved that off, and then we wrote the mission statement, and the mission statement says why. The mission statement does a great job saying why, as a matter of fact. At the time of rapid technological change and professional specialization, we can easily forget that the most important mission of the schools of architecture and universities is to offer inspiring and horizon-expanding teaching to the next generation. Wow, this is a wow effect. We need something like that here. Inspiring and horizon expanding. Very good. Well, why history? Yes. It still doesn't quite, I think. Well, history is the vehicle for the thing that we're, I mean, the purpose, I think, is the, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, a great vehicle for expanding horizons. But this can be contemporary only. This can be on a right on a spending. What is happening today in the world? That's a pretty narrow horizon. Yeah, so we have to think about the relationship yeah. between history and the present. Right? Well, there is a white paper that's supposed to accompany any conceptual change. And that's kind of what's forming in the comments field, is the outline of the white paper. So why history? Wait, just clarify. So you're saying that now 
requires a white paper. Well, that's the mechanism by that's which mechanism. NAB okay. justifies their change. We can send them a white paper. We uh, will send them a white paper. We will say okay. GHTC says <laughs> this is what it should be, and this is why. By the authority vested in us by, by the ourselves. Vested in us by <laughs> so many members the that public. we have. We can yes. Do the public now. Yes. <laughs> The public no, intellectuals. We have, we, we have authority now. GHTC has recognition. Uh, we've been around for a while. Seventh year. I'm surprised SAH is not doing the same. Right? right. What are they doing? Yeah, that's a good question. I'll ask them well, Pauline was <laughs> here. Pauline was here for the last session, and yes. she said uh, they haven't asked us. We were. They said SAH was involved in the last revision. Well, it was. Okay. Yes. It would be nice maybe to work together, the two institutions should work together. Well, we do. We can, yeah. We, we, and it would be much more... But we are much more proactive scenario. about this. Okay. SH is, you know, says they're into teaching, but really they're into publication and research. And, and really, so. they're reliant on us to do... Right. But we support. They could say, we like this. They yeah. will. Yeah. They will support us. Sorry. We're support. confident that they okay. will put their stamp of approval on okay, what we... Good. Yeah, we can go together. But what do we say is the question. How do you want to be... Why history? Yeah. Sorry. I was wondering if it would also be helpful to see what has been left out in the previous iterations, like in, in all the successive iterations. Right? Well, we had the three iterations of. Uh, Just to sort of get an idea of what, what is it that's coming out. Well, there's been a lot of wordsmithing. Western, non Western was the first thing to fall. Uh, traditions uh, was, went away in 2009. Indigenous, vernacular, local, regional survived. National went away. Uh, splitting the, uh, the world into four uh, hemispheres, which is a nonsense. Hemi means half. Um, so four half spheres. So I guess we have got two planets in the bargain. Um, <laughs> Landscape urban design vanished as well. Uh, and climactic in the forces list, um, socioeconomic uh, was split into economic social. Public health went away. Cultural factors was elevated to a category rather than being just a force within. Uh, so that's a good move with the cultural, but climactic went away. Um, so that's kind of a sense. And it does seem that the more you can avoid listing, the better. Oh. But you were going to pro you had a proposal? Oh, sorry. Well, when we go back to the Y history, uh, yeah. you could phrase it. So you can't see it, but I'm writing Y history. History is <laughs> the I most. I was thinking something like um, to provide students with a framework that allows them to uh, take conscience of their actions. To do, allows them to? To um, act consciously or uh, ethically. Eth eth ethically. Deliberate, ethically. yeah. Ethics, yeah. It seems like if you say anything controversial, then it'll come off as patronizing. Um, if you talk to say why and say how, so I mean, that would be maybe a, like, it seems like Do you think it's controversial to say that no. history it helps prepare people to think ethically? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I don't think that's controversial. Okay. Yeah. Well, especially worded the way. I think really. It's a good point. It's a good point. I mean, should the word ethics, if we are talking about. Uh, why do we want to study the intellectual history of the discipline? And it's because you want to figure out what are the ethics of architecture. Well, the, the rest of the mission statement gets to the next generation of global citizens. Oh, it does.
pure equity and access. So it's getting to ADA, but it's also talking at larger cultural ideas of responsibilities, access and design. So it's kind of there, but I agree with Bob. These might, parts of this might eventually merge, but they're still going to have a separate ADA accessibility. Yeah, but what, what you're reading is what an architect yeah. needs to know. And we're, we're trying to say why he needs to well, know history. No, exactly. But Bob was saying, and I kind of agree, that I think this one will wind up at some part of the issues of social equity and cultural diversity will wind up getting folded back into history. And maybe that's a way to get to why we need to know it. That's well, one of the one of the one of the features slash weaknesses, potential weaknesses, of this, is NAB very deliberately and adamantly insists that they are not dictating what courses. They're not designing courses. So if you can cover the history, uh, if you can cover this in studio, then cover it in studio. If you you know so. But, but there is pressure, if you put ADA compliance in here, um, historians are going to, uh, you know, there's... No, I'm not saying that, but yeah. that's in a section that's titled Cultural Diversity and Social Equity. Yeah. It's which, kind of... Which... Yeah, so this is one of their time, challenges. Which is one of the challenges. So I agree you ask why history... Well, I that's... I suspect... I suspect that's why they ignored A8 when our visit, because they said this is a mess, it, it's not allocated properly. So a guy comes out of the very, you know, presentist uh, public health, social equity, and uh, diversity kind of discussions. Right. Are you working in contemporary disadvantaged communities, or do you teach that as an ethical criteria? Exactly. That's, and, and, and connects to ecology and sustainability. Exactly. And you don't, from their perspective, really don't need much history for this. All this. But do we agree with that? No, we don't agree with well, that. But I'm just telling you <laughs> how they think. Uh, right. But I think that gets what, it's about. Okay, what you were saying about, about ethics. Like, I think there's something about ethics here that can feed in and, and link those two maybe a little bit more tightly in some way. Is it uh, next generation of global citizens? Yes. Am I remembering that right? Yeah, I think that's right. I recite it every morning before I <laughs> <laughs> before I sit down to my grave. Yes, next time we will have we will do a check as we let everybody into the coffin. Say the statement. <laughs> <laughs> Say it. <laughs> we have to sit on the same problem in my country, and my my idea is that really. History, history is not necessary. It's not the framing of uh, uh, Maybe it's necessary a uh, historical critic of the ideas in architecture that is different from a history of architects. It's critic, architectural critic, based on historical truths. But the focus is on critical, not, not on history. Uh, the idea of history as important in, in the training of an architect, it's a bossal idea. <laughs> it's a domain of a bossal idea. I think uh, I love history, but I, I think really it's, it's, it's the idea of history as a historian is not necessary. An architect needs to critique architecture and need historical tools to critique architecture. But really not need to know history in this specific way. This is the idea. But schools, I, I, I talk about my country, schools have only a few variations from those other videos. And they have the idea history is it's culture, it's uh, then people travel to Europe and know which is uh, which cathedral is it's, it's one and people know it, it's it, yeah, but this is not necessary for, to be an architect today. Uh, I think this is this is the problem. It's not history, it's critic architectural <laughs> talk about architecture. 
I, I propose in my courses, I say that I teach architectural critic, not okay. architectural oh. The university call architectural history, but I call architectural critic. Right. <laughs> it's so, so, yeah, that's right. So, I mean, one is, they think history is sort of expanded precedent study. Right, so there are precedents, and but you know you really should have some sense of the entire history of the world, so you have some idea of a diversity of precedents. So that's one way uh, people think about it. Uh, but what we, by by that phrase "world opening," the idea was that this is not about precedent knowing, given as if you know what good architecture is, rather. It is a giving you access to the possibility of architecture. Yes. That architecture as we think of it, as received through sort of uh, modified uh, canons of modernism, is just a way to think architecture. Uh, that, that architecture is actually a There's a diverse, there is a, you know, many ways to think architecture in the world. That. Most of them in my courses are there for the diversity requirement of the university. We have VLPA, visual language, visual literacy, and something, something requirement in the university. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, Vikram's entertaining and he shows a lot of pictures. So, okay. And he's easy. And he's easy. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite. So in part, some of that is that, but nevertheless, the question is relevant, and I've asked my students, you know, there's still a lot of VLPA courses. So why this one? And, and a lot of them do say, well, you know, it's, uh, it, uh, it, you know, and the way, I don't know what they say, what I reflect back to them is, I'm trying to locate your majors in the matrix of life. Right? <laughs> Uh, I mean, what is life? That was a circle of life. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, say that again. <laughs> no, I, I show them this particular graphic, you know, anyway, which has all the disciplines and all this large network which sort of connects them and it makes a cloud. And I said, this cloud is what life is and this is what I'm talking about. I'm trying f for you to see what you are studying and the work that you will be doing, how this is sort of connected to the... Uh, the matrix of life. So, something like that. But that's sort of focused on somebody who's doing computer science or uh, whatever. But the idea, I mean, I think this is what Mark's pointing out. And he said, this is the problem with modernist majoritarianism and our complicity in that which I am completely complicit, you know, I look at architecture and it has to be some version of modernism, otherwise it's no good. Uh, uh, we don't believe there is any other way to do architecture today. You're seeing the economics, you're seeing the labor, you're seeing different cultures. 
So maybe on Huck, which is I think what I've always seen JHCC is really trying to do is to get to the different cultures and the different peoples right. through the building. Right. So the yeah. building seems like ultimately the tool, not the, the tool, end. not the end. Yeah. Yes. It's it's sort of a that's right. the that's output. What I think you were saying. It's yeah. not, we're not just showing a slide saying learn this, but you're you're saying it's showing critique and learning. Yeah. The critique system, not just the building. Yeah. So as a critic, the problems yes. are, are not the buildings. The problem are the relationship between exactly. the buildings and people. Exactly. Yeah. And the buildings are it's a hard problem because. Buildings live much more than people. So one building <laughs> tells many histories exactly. of different people who, who live there. Yeah. Yeah. One slide fading away. One slide. One slide. Wow. That's, that outdoes Hank Mellon. <laughs> you can sue me, but it's one slide. <laughs> I think we are out of time. Yeah, it's ready. All right, well, Bob has the notes, and uh, we shall overcome. <laughs> but please, add why, some sense of why I think is important. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's there, it's there, but uh, when you do your proposal, it will be... This is perfectly compatible with the Eurocentric Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was actually one of the tests we ran at the last one. Could you still teach, you know, Shark Cathedral? Yes, you could, but could you still teach just the same old European course? No, you couldn't is what... I'm not sure if this one passes that test. Well, the word diversity... Uh, so, if now that we're out of time, <laughs> how would you like to see... The big reveal. Survey says, well, it was a very, first of all, it was a diff very different uh, session. But here's what we came up with global history, global histories and cultures. You like that? Understanding of the built environment, built in. Understanding of built environments as they develop over time in different parts of the world by diverse actors in terms of their political, religious, economic, social, ecological, and technological factors. That's, that's it. Okay. One sentence. Is what we, we didn't even raise the issue of social equity uh, because we did, it was hard enough. Save that. Save something for the for others to follow up on. But what do you what do you having thought about it? What further advancement on this? What you know? This also misses the why. So how would you say that? Yeah, they're still separated world. Yes, yes. Yeah, you're right. Oh. In and among. That's, yeah. Somehow I still want to put cultural in that final list political, religious, economic, yeah. social, ecological, technological. Well, wouldn't religious cover. <laughs> but cultural. <laughs> uh, wouldn't cultural cover religious as well? But it also covers other things. Yes. Well, that I, well, that seems to be why we, we cultural was elevated to a. Right. Uh, yes. Instead of a force, it became a, yes. a structure. Yeah. Because all of these things are culturally. Yeah, why? The, the sense that we're giving some notion of visual <laughs> <laughs> uh, visual literacy or some, some visual literacy. I don't know. Some a sense, well, maybe not these words, but some 
sometimes uh, we are educating them to look around, you know, to look around, have a perspective, a historical. Well, I think that this other one, um, you know, this, yeah, this, this is so well. Yes, yes. Like copy that. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. Yeah. So yes. or Mix. or make it even better. And, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But we need I think to to explain to somebody else, as another historian, uh, the dean of our schools, yeah. and that why history is important. Not so. Um, why they have 